Good morning, good morning. Well, welcome to our empowerment session this morning. We are empowering you on your self-esteem and self-image. I want you to, at this time, just get your mind tuned in. It's gonna be 20 minutes, 20 minutes of empowering you uh, to move forward and to have all that God wants you to have. So I want you to be excited. I want you to take the time to share this with someone right now. All right, looks like we're connected in. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Janelle. Hi, Takia. Thanks for tuning in. Um, sometimes I'm going to take the time just to thank you all for tuning in and to being a part of my empowerment sessions. I appreciate you so much. And I know that God has a great plan for you and everything you put your hands to, God will bless. So we are going to continue to talk about uh, our self-esteem and self-image. I'm going to be coming from my book, A Woman's Tool for Self-Empowerment. And you can go onto my website site, drperditameeks.org, drperditameeks.org, and you can order a copy of this powerful tool. This is one of my very first books, and I'm telling you, it will bless your life. And so we are going to continue on, and we're going to talk about this morning, the place called there. Where is the place for you that's called there? And of course, building your self-esteem, building your self-image. We have come from the book of Psalms 139, and it says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made that my soul knoweth right well. I know that God had taken the time to create me, to make me, and, and he knows exactly what I'm going to be and what he's called me to do. And so I got to make sure I find that purpose in life. I got to find what God wants me to do. I got to know that for a fact. I got to be assured of what I've been called to do in this life that I may not only be fulfilled within myself, but that I may impact so many around me. And so I want to encourage you right now. We are going to, uh, let's start at the book of King. Let's start at the book of Second King. We're going to start there. And the book of Second King really talks about Elisha. And I'm going to just kind of read a little bit of it really quickly. Um, actually, First King um, chapter number 17, starting at verse 2 through 6. It says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Get away from here and turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which floweth into Jordan, and it will be that you shall drink from the brook, and I commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which floweth into Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. And so God told Elisha to go there and he would provide for him there. And so I want you to know that there is a place called there in your life where God will provide for you. He will send you there. And it may look like a droughted place. It may look like a place where it does not have, you know, the resources you feel it should. But he sent him by the brook and right by the brook, he said, I'm going to feed you right there. I'm going to send food for you. I'm going to send meat and bread for you so that you will be able to move forward in what I have called you to do. There is a place called there in our lives. And in order for us to get there, we must know where there is. We must know what God is saying for us to do. We must know who God has called us to be so that when we get there, we know that that's the place that God would have us to be. And when you are building your self-esteem, you are building your self-image, you got to tap into who God is. That is your divine direction, your divine connection. That is where God will do the greatest things in your life when you know where you're going, what God has called you to do. And so I want to encourage you in the place called there, 
that God has called you to do things in your life. So as you move forward in those things, you have to be comfortable. And so God, we talked about our self-esteem and building our self-image. And so you may have, have some times in your life where everybody's not in agreement or where, you know, you have a hard time uh, moving forward in the things God's called you to do. In other words, you may run into some situations in life where you cannot move forward comfortably. And that's okay because that's going to happen. So that very place that God has called you to be in, that place called there, you've got to make sure your heart is clean. You've got to make sure that you know what God is saying to you because people will try to talk you out of where God has called you to be. So you have to know it for a fact. You cannot allow people to talk you out of it. And so I want you to just jot this scripture down. Psalms 51 and 10, it says, Create in me a clean heart. Oh God, and renew the right spirit in me. Also, Proverbs 4 and 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So, God created me a clean heart so that when people come against what I've been called to do, that I am not, I'm not going to be moved by what they say. I'm not going to be moved by what they do. They may not care for me, and that's okay, because how many know everybody's not going to like you? They're just not. Everybody is not going to like you. So you've got to be firm and move forward in what God has called you to do. I want you to share this with someone right now because somebody needs this so that they can know that God will call you to some areas and those around you may never agree to what God has called you to do. But you got to know it for a fact that God, this is what you have called me to do and I shall move forward in it. So what happens in that walk? Well, what happens is you may have people around you that don't like you because of your education. You may have people that disagree with you because of your look how you carry yourself, your motivation. As soon as you walk in a room, they just can't take it. It's okay because guess what? God has invested some things in you. And as you move forward, everybody's not going to agree. Everybody just is not going to like what God is doing in your life. And you have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt what God has called you to do. I remember many, many years ago, when I first um, decided what I wanted to do in life, my mom, my grandmom, they were all um, hair stylists. And um, I am a fourth generation hair stylist and fourth generation salon owner. And so I remember being young and coming up in that time. And I remember people saying, oh, you need to do something else. Oh, don't do that. And I had to be assured within myself that I love what I was doing, that this is what God called me to do. And I was very good at what God called me to do. Well, I could not allow the naysayers to feed into my spirit. I had to maintain my course. And I'm telling you, I loved doing what I was doing. I loved impacting women in every way in life. I'm telling you, I made women look beautiful. That's what I've been called to do. I empowered women. I taught them. I spoke into their lives. I helped them to move forward in the things that God wanted them to do. I was able to minister to women right in the salon. And I'm telling you, it was such a blessing. I really, I, I was so fulfilled. And you know, God has some times where he'll move you from one place to another. And I want you to know that you got to be comfortable in that. It is difficult. Yes, it is to move from one area to another. It does affect how you view what you are called to do. I mean, you got to hear God for yourself because he'll say, make a move, go to there, go there. And uh, there, I'm going to take care of you. And so guess what? You got to believe that there, he is going to take care of you. You got to keep your heart clean. Why? Because people will come against the very fibers of your heart. They will come against the very things that God has called you to do. They will really try to rattle your cage. The enemy is after your esteem. He is after your self-image. He wants to tear you down. And you got to know that, oh no, I'm not going to let that happen. 
I am going to keep myself encouraged. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to allow who I am to be depleted because of what others think. I'm not going to allow that to happen. I'm going to move forward in God. Oh, yes, I am. And so I want to encourage you that no matter what happens, you've got to build your esteem. You've got to be healthy within yourself. And so we talked about some uh, time ago in regards to the Proverbs 31 woman and the virtuous woman. She has to make sure she takes time for herself. Why is that? because she has to build herself up. Because obstacles, things, discouragement will come her way. She's gotta be built up that she knows what God wants her to do. She's gotta be built up within herself. Oh, forget everybody around you. Build yourself up first so that then you can take care of those around you. Then you can help your family. Then you can help your children. You can help your loved ones. But until you are built up within yourself, you can't help anybody. Because it's all about, you know, oh, woe is me. This happened to me. That Okay, forget all that. Get in the face of God. Know that God is directing your path. Know that he will help you if you feed your own spirit first. How can you feed another unless you are already built up? If you're built up within yourself, I mean, you may be having some days of feeling, you know, like, oh my gosh, I can't hardly make it. Well, get in the mirror and talk to yourself. Girl, you can do this. You don't have to back down. You don't have to shut your mouth, but you can seek God for his presence, for his guidance, for his direction. That's the purpose of us having God in our life. I mean, he's our heavenly father. So my goodness, God, I mean, I need your help today. I feel a little sluggish. I just don't feel like I could make it. I don't feel like I'm worth what I am, God. What, what would you have me to do? Well, then that's where the Holy Spirit comes in. Your faith comes in and helps and takes control. And guess what? Before you know it, you are back at it. You are feeding your spirit so that you are empowered to move forward in what he has called you to do. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, I'm excited because it doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter what anyone does. I am not going to allow others to stop me from moving forward. So some roadblocks that could try to come into our way is others try to intimidate you. Well, guess what? You've got to recognize that thing and you don't need to allow others to make you feel less than. So when you build yourself up, then you are assured of who you are and what God has called you to do. So when you get around others that may be successful, you, you're not wavered. You're not, you're not pulled apart. Why? Because this is what I'm called to do. That's what you're called to do. This is what I'm, and I'm good at what I'm called to do. See, you got to know you're good at it. And a lot of times I've talked to, to different people and I say, well, are you good at what you do? And they'll say, well, you know, like I'm, no, you should say yes. If you're good at it, you should be able to say, oh yes, I'm very good at what I do. This is what I've been called to do. And when you've been called to do it, you need to study it. You need to put yourself all in it. You need to go out of your way to make sure you know what God is calling you to do and that you know the ropes, that you have the wisdom and the knowledge and the instruction that you need to move forward in Jesus name. And then a, another roadblock is, you know, when you find that you are a person that's always bragging about your accomplishments or bragging about your success, you're always bragging, bra you shouldn't have to do that. That is not necessary because what you have done will speak for itself. What you have already done in your life will speak for itself. Listen, God will make room for your gifts. He will bless the very things you put your hands to. And so I want you to be encouraged and know that God already knows. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. I'm telling you, you don't have to do that. All you got to do is stay in the vein that God has called you to be in. And then another thing um, that, that can really get you off track, that can be a roadblock, is um, putting others down. I mean, stop, stop looking at others and trying to evaluate what they're doing. Just evaluate yourself. See, in order to build your self-image, you must evaluate yourself. 
If you don't evaluate yourself, you can't make yourself better. So it's all about me evaluating me so that I can move forward in what God has called me to do. So do I have shortcomings? Absolutely. Do you have some things that you really need to get right? Absolutely. I don't care how long, you know, you've been doing what you do, how long you've been married or how long you've been, you know, working on this job. There is always room for growth. And so we need to understand there's room for growth. God wants us to grow. So today, 2017 is different than 2016. 2017 is different from what you were doing last year, the year before, 10 years ago. Hello, we have gone into a whole new dimension of life. And so what do you need to do? You need to realize that this is a new day. This is a new day in my life. And I need to move in the vein that God has called me to move in. And so how I used to move, I may not be able to move like that today. I have to change how I do things today. Why? Because it's a new day. And every day, God wants us to seek his presence. He wants us to know that it's a new time, a new day. And you must move forward in what he has called you to do. And listen, if it's not, if you're not sure that this is what you're called to do, you go back to the boardroom and pray. Go back to that closet, talk to God. God, what is it that you've called me to do? What do I love to do? What makes me happy? What can I, every morning when I get up, what, what brings me joy? When I do X, Y, and Z, it brings me joy. Like I know for a fact, that many years ago, I was called into the beauty industry. Well, no matter what anyone said, I knew that was my call. And I was able to use my gift. I was able to minister. And of course, you know, a lot of the people didn't know at first that I was ministering. But as my life evolved, I, I became, you know, more powerful in the things of God. I sought the, the Lord in, in whatever I was doing. And so God began to open great doors for me in regards to being able to help those that were in my space. And so what, what happened? Well, ev things evolved in my life. And as they evolved, as God began to move me in a different direction, I'm telling you, it wasn't easy. But if, if, God is moving you there, then you need to be happy about it. So I've always really enjoyed what I do. I've always enjoyed my life. I really have. I have always enjoyed my life. Why? Because I know what God has called me to do. And when you know what he's called you to do, you will enjoy it. You will get up in the morning and be like, girl, I'm enjoying this. I like this. I like what I'm doing. And then also, your gift will make room for you. So say that you're doing something that doesn't net a lot of income, but you like it. You may be working a job, but you do something on the side and you like what you do on the side. You wanna create a business. Well, allow God to open that door for you. Allow him to do that because he will do that very thing. I'm telling you, I, as I said earlier, I was a fourth generation hairstylist, uh, opened my own business in I think 1998. Worked for my mom for 15 years, loved it, absolutely loved it, took care of her salon like it was my salon, put all of my heart into what I was doing, and, and God just evolved things in my life. Went into my own salon, did that for quite some time, I'm going to say about 10 years, 9 or 10 years, turned it over to, to one of my daughters, um, moved forward in that. God is blessed, and now we still have a salon, but I choose to really have it as an educational center. That was the goal. That was the vision. So guess what? We're going to make it a school, a beauty school. And so always trying to empower women, that's what I've been called to do. So my, my goal in life, my destiny in life is to empower women. That's what I've been called to do. And I absolutely love it. So you need to love what you do and God will bless what you do. When you love it and put your heart into it, he really will bless it. And then you got to understand that, you know, God has a divine destiny for your life. And that very thing that, you know, you might have been saying, well, this place isn't working. Well, it may just be you're there in life. And there, God will feed you. 
He will bless your life. And so I encourage you today to be a woman of prayer. Be a woman of prayer. Pray, seek the face of God because God is the one that will bless your life. He is the one that will bless you and move you forward. And so let's know all together. Let's, let's agree all together that God is blessing your life, that your self-esteem, your self-image is going to grow. You're going to be empowered. You're going to know what he's called you to do. How? By reading that word, by getting into that closet and praying and seeking his face. And then he's going to point you to your there. He's going to show you where you need to be. I want to just thank you so much. want you to share this clip with somebody. And this is part two, part two of our Building Self Image, part two. And uh, of course, I'm coming from my book, A Woman's, a Woman's Tool for Self-Empowerment. So make sure you get a copy of this. You can go to my website, drperditameets.org. This is one of my very first books, and I think it will impact your life in such a way that your life will be changed, that you will be motivated. You will be motivated to move forward in what God has called you to do because he's given you the power. He's giving you the ability to move forward in life. So God bless you. Be blessed and know that God is with you beyond a shadow of a doubt that he shall bless your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.